Snake, a Hall of Fame bucking horse. Snake buck from late 1940s to 1969. Herman Linder was a great cowboy and rodeo man from Alberta. He collected lots of bucking horses and sold them to stock contractors in the U.S. and Canada. When Joe Kelsey bought Snake from Herman Linder in 1947, he'd been bucking for two to three years, and no rider had been successful at riding him. Snake was a gentle horse to handle. He could have been a good saddle horse, but he preferred to buck. Snake would never step on a rider if he could avoid the down cowboy. He did not like to be bumped in the crails or alleyways when the horses were being moved. Snake would always be the last through a gate or moving into an alley or into a loading chute. When he was loaded onto a truck, he would gently position himself in the back corner. Felix Cooper was a renowned clown and bullfighter who also rode saddle broncs. Felix drew Snake at the 1947 Orville Washington Rodeo. And after bucking off Snake, Felix walked back to the chute and said, That's the only horse I've ever been on that can look you in the eye and buck you off at the same time. One of the most spectacular rides of all time occurred at Penticton, British Columbia in 1948 when Snake and Deb Copenhaver were drawn in the saddle bronc riding contest. In the photo, Snake is going down the front of the bucket chutes, flying through the air with his head thrown back to the right. Gene Curtis was another good clown and bullfighter that was also good at riding bucking horses. At a rodeo in Packwood, Washington, Snake launched Gene Curtis over his head and stepped on his face. Blood flew and it appeared that Gene would not survive the fall. But after a ride in the ambulance, a few stitches and a big bandage on his head, Gene was back the next day performing his clown acts and fighting bulls. As a saddle bronc, Snake compiled a very long list of riders that did not make a successful ride. As time began to low, slow his momentum, Snake was transferred to the bareback string. His performance as a bareback horse was far above average, and he made the trip to two, two NFRs. In 1969, Snake was retired and allowed to live out his final days on the Rice Ranch near Cooley City, Washington. A tribute to Snake. Snake was a horse of renown. He threw off more than just one clown. From 46 through 1968, Snake didn't seek fame. It was his fate. He was very famous in his younger day. Snake bucked in a special high jumping way. When in the air, his feet kicked up and back. He threw his head to the left and right, giving slack. Felix Cooper was a clown with a smile. Snake got him with his high jumping style. Felix tipped his hat and without a scoff, said he can look you in the eye while he bucks you off. Gene Curtis was another clown to bite the dirt. I was pretty young when I saw Gene get hurt. A rodeo in Packwood became a scary place when Snake bucked Gene off and stepped on his face. The match of the season came on a Canadian run. It was a contest that makes rodeo fun. Snake was showing all his tricks with pride when Deb Copenhaver became the first to ride. If the horses rushed and jammed through a gate, Snake would always hold back and wait. He showed more personality than a little bitty and was retired on a ranch at Cooley City. Snake, a Hall of Fame bucking horse.